on the tour bus with Riley Green. What's going on? I feel I don't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I don't belong here. Uh, no, nah, man, this is this is home most of the year, so uh, appreciate you coming to hang out with us. Well, you're out on the road with uh, with Luke Combs, and you're right, this does become home on the road, right? Yeah, man, it's uh, it's, it's really kind of a blur. We've played so many shows, you really know where you are, but we've got up here in Canada and uh, Toronto in uh, November. It'll wake you up and let you know where you're at. It's a little warmer in Alabama when we left. Yeah, before we started recording, we were explaining what the toque actually is. Yeah. That's a toque. That is is a toque for everybody back home watching. I had no idea what that was. That's a big time piece of Canadian apparel right there. Yeah, there there you go. How's the tour so far? Man, it's great. I mean, we just got started, but, you know, I've just been such a big fan of Luke for so long and uh, all of his songs are, you know, things I think I can relate to. So I think we probably have a lot of the same fans and it's just great to get in front of some of his and try to win him over you know it's a great opportunity for me he's got a pretty good guy opening up the show i mean two billion streams of your music it, it's hard to quantify when you hear a number like two billion what does that mean to you yeah i don't know that many people so <laughs> some strangers are listening to my music i guess it's uh oh, it's just it's crazy to see uh, you know all those you talking about gold records or platinum records and you know I just number one songs it's, it's kind of uh, a lot of accomplishments I never thought I'd get to so it's uh it's something you never get tired of hearing and also very motivating as a songwriter to make you want to keep keep trying you know when you do hear numbers like that two billion streams and platinum and double platinum and everything else what's the metric that means the most to you how do you gauge success fans it shows the crowd how loud they sing maybe maybe decimals yeah I, I always think that you know, as long as they're passionate enough to come out to a show and sing a song back to me, you know, like I wish Grandpa's never died or something, where they're, you know, they're singing it from a place of emotion and it, and it, you know, strikes a chord with them somehow. That's that's really kind of my motivation is just trying to write songs that make people feel some type of way. I wish Grandpa's never died. I love that song, and I got to go back. I think it was two years. Um, CRS it's a Country Radio Conference and. We had an event in Scott Bruchetta's garage. Now, Scott's yeah. garage and mine are- It's not t- like, yeah, <laughs> nobody's garage is like Scott's garage. Yeah, he's uh, got several NASCARs in there and Ferraris and Indy cars and everything else. But uh, yeah, I mean, that was kind of my introduction to a lot of country radio where that song was playing over at Scott's, you know, when everybody's in town for that CRS. And, uh, you know, even little moments like that where you're talking about 20 or 30 people being there for it, just, you know, you kind of get a feel for what a song is or could be by just the reaction to it. I consider myself lucky to be in the business on the radio side, but to still be such a fan. And I love that song. And I was in that room and you're playing it with the acoustic guitar. And I thought, I think I'm as happy as a human being can be right now. (laughs) And I got a video on my phone. I love having it. Well, I, you know, in the same sense, I feel like I'm lucky to be doing what I'm doing and still be a fan of country music. You know, it's a, I don't feel like I'm too far removed from that, just being a fan. So it's uh it's obviously an awesome way to make a living and and things are going well for us we got a bigger tour coming up seems like every year but it's also kind of nice to be able to stop and just take a look at what's going on and appreciate it tell me about the motivation for that song i my two granddaddies uh my granddaddy buford and my granddaddy linden were both you know big big factors in kind of who i turned out to be I, i grew up you know fishing with my granddaddy and and golfing and my granddaddy buford was the one that liked country music so we'd sit around and pick old songs and uh, I just wrote the songs a tribute to them, and it, you know, turned out a lot of people kind of could relate and had the same relationship with their granddaddies, I guess. Well, I got trying to figure out why is that. I mean, it's a great song, but my grandfather, one of them was gone before I was born, and the other one was gone when I was about two. So I don't know. Maybe I love the song so much out of a place of envy. I don't know. Well, you know, so I had a guy come up to me, an older gentleman, one time, and he said that he never knew his grandparents, but he was a granddad, you know, and they, so he looked at it from that way. So it's. It's just proof that people find a way to make songs about their own thing. I, obviously, when I started writing it, I didn't want to just sit there and write a song describing my granddad. So I, I put a lot of other things in there that, you know, I mean, some people, the well, wish good dog never got gray and old. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Matt, start crying right now. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So, my old dog Spike. Yeah. So, I mean, it, yeah. there's a lot in that song that, you know, can strike a chord with somebody. And, and uh, you know, it's, it was an accident to be as successful a song as it was. I'm glad people can relate to it. Well, moving ahead to now, congrats on the success of Half of Me with Thomas Rhett. Yeah, a little lighter note, uh, <laughs> but definitely still a really fun song and very fortunate that Thomas let me be a part of that. It's amazing to me when I hear the backstory of how that song came to pass. Thomas wants to learn to duck hunt. You guys are at your duck hunting and all of a sudden the idea or an idea to make a song together. And now you got number one on your hands here in Canada. 
Yeah, Thomas wanted to learn to duck hunt, and I wanted the number one song on country radio. So that's a good deal. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> he said, anybody in country music wants to go duck hunt, I'll take them. We'll just throw me on the song. That was a, uh, nah, it just, it's such a relatable, easy going, makes you want to roll the window down and, you know, enjoy summer. So it was a, a really fun song and a good timing song for me. Big news came down the pipe earlier today. You're going to be a part of Boots and Hearts 2023. Yeah. That's a pretty stout lineup, too. Yeah, there's a couple of guys I'd heard of, um, you know. Tim or, something. Yeah, 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 yeah Tim yeah, McGraw. Something. I think his dad played baseball. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's an Australian guy, not bad with a guitar. That's right, yeah. Keith Urban, man, it's uh, just a huge festival, and, and I've heard so much about it, so I'm just excited to be a part of it. It's so great. Right about the time you go on stage is going to be when this big group of zombies comes over the hill, and there's going to be about 30,000 of them fill the pit, and I'm telling you, it's an unbelievable crowd. I can't wait. That's going to be awesome. We can't wait to have you there. Um, and, and again, uh, congrats, too, on half of me becoming a, a number one hit here in Canada, even before it did down in the U.S. That's a common thing for me. There was this girl who did the same thing. You know, Why do you think that is? I, well, it, it's a testament to a lot of country music fans up here, I guess. You know, I mean, as, as, a, as a new artist, there's a lot of competition in the U.S., a lot of artists going out. And, you know, it's, it's such a battle to get that, that radio play. And... Uh, you know, it's for some reason, some of y'all jumped on board with my first single and, and this last one with Thomas, so very appreciative of that. What's coming up in 2023? Uh, I'm definitely going to have a new single of my own out unless Thomas calls me and wants to do another song about <laughs> drinking beer, in which case I'm probably open to it. But uh, going to put out some new music and, and spend some time in the studio and spend a little time writing and just, you know, look forward to being out with Luke and doing some stadiums. Tell you what, maybe you and I will go dog hunting. And if we come out of that trip with a number one hit, you've really done something. If you can get a guy like me on top of the chart. I don't know. I felt that way about myself. So <laughs> we'll try it. Where do people find you on socials? Uh, Riley Duckman. Uh, Instagram, uh, RileyGreenMusic.com. And I assume I've got a website and merch and all kind of stuff on there. So check it out. We're so happy to have you on this side of the border. And uh, enjoy the rest of the tour with Luke and the crowd tonight. Appreciate it, man.